What is up everybody? Welcome back to k Zero. My name is Zach. And in this video, we are tackling the question of how to reverse a list in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. What is up everybody? So like I mentioned, we are talking about how to reverse a list in Python. And today I have four methods that you can use to reverse a list. But first I want to kind of talk about the setup. Um, I have this import right now just because uh, we have a list right here. And I want to make sure that each time I pass that list into this method, it is a new like instance of the list and not like a you know, another copy. So that's what we're going to use with this setup is we're going to use this list, one, two, three, four, and we're going to reverse this list in all four of these methods. So it should say when I print it out, it should say four, three, two, one. So let's start talking about method number one. All right. So method number one is essentially just using a loop. So we know that with loops, we can do a four in range and we can pass it like this first spot will be like, as range will say, um, it'll say like it's the start position. So this position is the start and then you have your end position or basically go until you get to this spot. So like it shouldn't hit negative one, it'll always end up at zero. And then your step count. Now this can be a positive number. In this case, well, we wanna go backwards and we're gonna, cause since we're starting from the very end, um, and we're gonna go to the beginning. And then essentially what we do is just, it's gonna start at the, the, the end of the list and gonna count backwards. And so at the indexes, and we'll, so this this first go around, it should be four. The next one should be three, two, and one. So if we run this method, essentially um, what you'll see is it should say method number one or three, two, one. So that's it. That's how you do, uh, that's how you essentially have a reversal list with using a for loop is it's basically using this range value, giving it the, in, the ending index all the way to what you want to, where you want to stop. So in our case, we wanted to stop at, you know, index zero. So this will help us stop at index zero and then go back by however many we want to go back, which we would just wanted to go one by one. So that's method number one, let's start talking about method number two. All right, so method number two is essentially with slicing because essentially um, with slicing, you can just like, if you haven't used it before, is you basically give the brackets, like you're gonna like do an index into a, into a list. And when you do like, when you give the first one before a colon, that's your start. And then this, this next one is the end. And then this last one is the step size. Um, that you want to take. But if you leave the start and end blank, and then you just do the step size and put a negative one, essentially this makes it so when it goes through the list, it's going to go through the list backwards, starting backwards, because it's saying go from end to start, because we're doing the step size of negative one, so it's going to go from end to start. And that's how you get, essentially, if I run this application, you're going to get method number two, because I, uncom I commented that method number one, I'm going to method number two, you get four, three, two, one of our list, one, two, three, four. So that is essentially how you reverse a list using slicing in Python. Okay, so method number three is essentially using um, the function, the list function of reverse. So all list objects have a function of reverse or method that, of reverse, and it'll do it in place. So what that means is if I just call list.inPlace and then I go to the next line, so essentially I could say print, let's just do this, let's copy this print that there. And if I run this, essentially this should say one, two, three, four, because that's coming in as one, two, three, four. List reverse makes it so it's in place. I don't have to actually add like list equals list dot reverse because this will just do it in place. And now when I print it out here, it should say four, three, two, one. So if I run this application, which you'll see, I'll make sure everything's come to the, yep, there it is. Boom. So method number three is first one, two, three, four. And then we do the list reverse. Now it's four, three, two, one. So that's how you can use um, the basic list method of reverse to actually reverse your list list in Python. Another way that you can reverse a list in Python is essentially by using the reversed uh, method or function. Uh, I guess reverse function is what it'd be called in Python. And essentially what this is, is you just call this reversed and pass in the list that you want to reverse. But the thing is, is when you run this, if you don't cast this or re put this or wrap this, uh, wrap a list ob or a list object around this, essentially this is going to return an object. And we don't want that. We want the actual list. So when I do this list uh, parentheses, put the reverse list inside of it, essentially what that's going to do is going to take this object and convert it back to a list. And what I'll show you what I guess I'm, I'm talking about here is if I do this, um, you'll see that, and I run this, you'll see that it returns this list object. Object. Now you'll see if I put the list, um, if I convert this to a list by using the list constructor, essentially it's just going to say, hey, here's my list of 4321. So that's how you use um, the reversed function to, and, and the list constructor essentially to convert, or excuse me, to reverse a list in Python. So now you have four different methods of how to reverse a list in Python that you can use at your discretion. Now there's probably a time and a place for all of those. Um, and some, frankly, you probably just like more than the other because, I mean, some 
sometimes it's better, in my opinion, to probably slice the string and reverse it that way rather than to go through a for loop. But there may be a case where you need the indexes and a for loop may be best. But try it out in all the programs and the application that you're doing and see what works best for you um, and what you're trying to do. And I hope this provided value. If it did, please smash that like button below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so we, continue about, so we can continue to learn about software development, programming, and anything else in the development world that I find interesting and, and would like to share with you. But until next time, keep on coding.